Um, footballer salaries, at the moment, this is upsetting me because I'm a Liverpool fan and we're going to lose Mane because of it. We'll, we might lose Salah because of it because Liverpool won't go on that gravy train. They want to run it in a different way and in many ways I, I admire it, but we're going to lose out. Um, what are your thoughts on football salaries and where it's going? Um, I think if the, if the money is in football, uh, then I think the players should be rewarded accordingly because they're the ones giving the entertainment. Uh, so I think you have to, when you, when you look at the problems of the, of the money and the pressures that clubs are under, this is, this is where the problem starts, is when people start gambling the club's future uh, on success and spending money that they can't afford. So, I mean, wh whatever the financial fair play rules are, which nobody uh, can actually understand because they're so freaking complicated. Uh, and then, what they, what, this is the, the thing that makes me laugh about the financial fair play is they go, right, financial fire player, you can't break those rules. If you break those rules, we're going to fine you. Well, the reason they've broken those rules is because they've got loads of money. <laughs> Finding them is not really going to hurt them. So why would you do that? So basically, they, they've made a load of rules to try and appease people, but the rules are toothless and they do shit all, basically. Um, so that's got to go for a start. I think the problem lies with the, with the owners of the football clubs who are prepared to be held to ransom by the agents. Now people go, oh, the agents are bad people, they're, they're holding the clubs to ransom. Well, if all the owners got together and went, actually, we're, we're only ever going to pay this much, uh, that takes away the problem then, because if everyone agrees to that, then the agents won't have anywhere to go. They can't, they can't hold us to ransom. We go, well, we go here because they're going to pay us more. You go, well, they can't because this is what we've agreed is to be the, the highest amount that we're going to pay. So there's all your clubs that want to pay you all that money. Just choose one. Yeah, simple as that. But um, uh, I think egos get involved. I think the, the money is also obviously flooded into football by the media. Um, so it's very difficult then to when you start messing about with the fixtures um, and the, the people that get shafted at the end of the day are the fans. Um, it's, it, it's so complicated and so mm. complex uh, that the, the player salaries, I, I don't blame the players one bit, you know. No. They're, they're the ones, if the money's there, the money's coming into football, then why shouldn't the players be rewarded? Uh, I think a lot of, there are a lot of players that are rewarded probably disproportionately given their ability um, but that's the that's the way of the world that's mm. the the financial situation that the clubs are in they can afford to pay these people these this money mm. but um, I, 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 if I was in charge of a football club I, I, I'm not sure I'd be paying the kind of wages that I'm paying for the return that I get in terms of their output on a football field mm is a bit disproportionate. Um, why are the fans shafted? The fans are shafted because uh, kick-off times get moved at short notice when they've bought their train tickets, they've sorted out their accommodation, um, they spend a lot of money following their football club and, and at short notice they go, actually, game's not on a Saturday anymore, it's on uh, Monday night and uh, if you want to travel all the way down to Southampton from Newcastle on a Monday night and try and get back, fucking good luck to you. Um, so all that kind of stuff happens and the fans are the ones that get shafted. It's very expensive to go and watch football these days. With all the amount of money that is coming in to the game through sponsorship and through the, through the media, the tickets should be cheaper than what they are. Mm. So I, I, I just feel like they take advantage. They take advantage of the fans because they know that the fans love their club and they'll do anything to support their club. Uh, and they take advantage of that by charging them too much money, moving the kickoffs at short notice. Um, and I feel sorry for the fans. Mm. Yeah, the whole Champions League final thing. I mean, I tried to go. <laughs> Did you? Good, good luck. Please, you didn't. Uh, well, <laughs> not just because Liverpool didn't win, but yeah, because of what happened. Um, I mean, yeah. madness that a kickoff would be delayed by 
I mean, when they said 15 minutes, you knew it wasn't 15 minutes. You knew you were being lied to. But the five to 25 grand it would have cost to go. All easy jet flights, two, three grand. Wow. You know, you club together. It's just, it's like, Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Again, yeah. we're just taking advantage of the situation. Yeah. yeah nice, massive profiteering. But yeah, that's the way the world's gone. Mm. Were you ever close to leaving Southampton? Yeah, I nearly joined Spurs when I was 21. Ah, but that was obviously quite early in your career. It was. That was the, the closest I ever came. In fact, Spurs were the only team I ever spoke to. Right. Southampton didn't know about it. No. But, <laughs> but I did. I had a meeting with Spurs, which I, I'm happy to admit all these years later. Yeah. Um, How long did you keep it a secret for? Well, uh, I kept it a secret. Uh, so this happened in 1990 uh, and I, it was kept a secret for about seven or eight years and then the chairman of Spurs at the time was a guy called Irving Scholar uh, and he did an autobiography in about 1997, I think 98 maybe, uh, and in his autobiography he decided to write about this meeting that took place with me. Um, so it was no longer a secret. So uh, yeah, that was... Um, that was the closest I ever came. I, I'd agreed terms with Spurs and everything. Uh, I was just about to get married at the time. Uh, and um, in the end, my fiance decided she didn't want to go and live in London. So I had to make a decision. I either joined Spurs or I got married. So I got married. <laughs> Six years later, I was divorced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> But I, I, again, I, I have no regrets about that. I don't, I don't blame my ex-wife. I'm not, I'm not mad at my ex-wife for, for that. I, I made the decision uh, ultimately, and, and I take responsibility for those decisions. And to this day, I have no regrets about spending my whole career at Southampton. Mm. And were you, um, were you upset when the news of that meeting came out in the autobiography? Um, I was a little bit disappointed that, that what was a gentleman's agreement should have stayed mm. uh, that way. Um, I don't think it was really necessary to write about that. I don't think it added anything to his book, quite frankly. Um, so I, think, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I was a bit disappointed that it came out, but shit happens, I'm not that bothered really. You could have surely made some big money leaving Southampton at the pinnacle of your career. Um, that kind of, back in the day, it would have been big money. I mean, <laughs> the money that we're talking about, uh, that I could have made in those days is probably money that if you're playing in League One now, that's probably what you're earning. Mm. So it's not, you know, it wasn't mega in terms of what you're seeing in today's money. Um, you know, the, the most I ever earned at Southampton uh, as a basic wage was just under four grand a week. Um, so, you know, it wasn't the, the kind of money. And if I would have, I had a chance to join Chelsea, I think it was in 1995. Um, I was thinking about a couple of grand a week, probably at that point. I might, if I'd have gone to Chelsea, it might have been on, I don't know, nine or ten. So although it was, it was a lot of money. If you if you equate that to what's going on in today's mm. money, not really that big. No. You know, um, yeah, like I say, you've probably got players in League One in that kind of money. Yeah, but it's all relative and inflation. Inflation's high right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wonder why. <laughs> Fucking lockdowns. <laughs> yeah. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to watch the full Matt Letissier unfiltered interview, watch it here.